Hey guys, Eric here from Eric Photography. So I just finished watching a video that our old pal Bill posted right here on this channel about 50 millimeter lenses and the 50 millimeter focal length in general. I'll link, no, well, I'm not gonna link it. I thought I'd offer a response to the video. Now Bill's posted all kinds of reviews about all different 50 millimeter lenses in the past. The Sigma, Nikon, he did a review, one of our most, I was gonna say popular, but notorious videos, uh, a review of the Canon EF 50 millimeter 1.8 lens. Uh, in which he said he really wasn't a good lens, and I kind of agree. But we got a lot of negative feedback, a lot of comments, a lot of dislikes on that one, which I didn't even realize that the dislike button is, I guess, gone from YouTube now. You can't really see, uh, which I kind of wish it was still there. But we had a lot of dislikes on that one, uh, but a lot of people watched it. We had some really good feedback on that one. Uh, so it was interesting to see. So when he posted this video, it really wasn't actually this one so much about a particular lens, a lens review, even though he was talking about the Nikon Z mount 50 millimeter 1.8 lens, and he said it was a really nice, good lens. Uh, it was more a review from Bill of the 50 millimeter focal length in general. Now, he's always kind of thought that it was a boring focal length, uh, very limiting in some aspects, which, you know, I can see, I kind of agree. Uh, but for a lot of photographers, that's, that's you know, they're one of their go-to lenses. That's one of the first primes that they get. It's always part of their kit. You can usually get a nice cheap one at a wide aperture, like a 50 millimeter 1.8, and just have it as part of your kit. A lot of people like it. Uh, Bill doesn't, and a lot of people agree with him. So I read through, all the, read through all the comments, wanted to see the feedback, and the feedback really echoed a lot of what Bill said in the video, in that really it's just personal taste. It's really not his cup of tea. The 50 millimeter focal length, for some people is great, and it just, for some people, just doesn't fit their shooting style. Maybe in some situations yet, but a lot of situations, not so much. Uh, and a lot of comments were like that too. You really, everybody's kind of, you know, to each his own. Everybody has, you know, lenses that they like and don't like for whatever reasons, and everybody has their own personal shooting style. Which really, you know, got me thinking about, you know, what a broad range of photographers are out there and how, you know, there really isn't any, you know, formula for doing it. How everybody approaches it a different way it really got me thinking about photographers and photography in general. And uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end. Uh, but for me, you know, Bill mentioned in the video that that's my starting point to 50 millimeters. And that's really my approach is my 50 millimeter lens is always on my camera. I always have it set to a 2.8 aperture and that's my starting point for everything. So when I first approach a scene, unless it's an, an extreme scene, which I know I'm gonna need a super telephoto or a really wide, ap a really wide angle lens, I've, I'm starting out with 50 millimeters in mind. I'm seeing things, you know, without even looking through the camera, I'm seeing things from that point of view. And I'm thinking about my approach in that basic, you know, very normal uh, focal length, normal viewpoint of 50 millimeters. And 2.8 is kind of a normal aperture. So, and then I'll expand from there. If I need to go wider, I'll change my lens, I'll go wider. If I need to open up my aperture more or close it down more, whatever, I'll do it from there. And I'll kind of expand on the scene from there. But 50 millimeters and then expanding out in every direction from there is always my starting point. I start in the middle and I expand out from there in every direction. It's just the way I do it. It's the way I've always done it. And, you know, other people might be set up differently in their mind, the way they approach things. Uh, and it really, like I said before, it got me thinking about how photography is a really, I think, diverse uh, art form in that, you know, there really isn't a, a, a typical person that is a photographer. I've come across a lot of photographers over the years, and really they come from every walk of life, every income variation, uh, really every ethnic group, every gender. I've met people, so such a diverse group of people in photography, and I kind of wonder why that is. Why is, you know, over other art forms maybe, uh, photography is really, you know, encapsulates all of humanity, you know, there's really a very broad spectrum of people who are involved in photography, who are really dedicated photographers. Uh, and I wonder why that is, I'm not really 100% sure. I think part of it might have to do with the fact that everybody is exposed to photography, you know, at an early age, regardless of where you live, who you are, especially now with you know, smartphones, you know, everybody has a camera all the time. Uh, but even going back years and years, you know, everybody is exposed to photography at an early age. It's something that's accessible to them. It's something that they can do, whether it was back, you know, decades ago with a disposable point and shoot camera uh, or something now like everybody has, you know, a smartphone, even from a young age. You know, kids have, you know, iPods and stuff like that that they can shoot with. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's a real, it's something that everybody's exposed to at an early age. So it's accessible to everybody. So I think maybe that is probably the 
starting point for one of the reasons that photography is so so diverse you know maybe other art forms like you know maybe people weren't introduced painting and uh you know other things cooking and music maybe not really so much but i really think everybody gets a dose of photography early in life uh that they're exposed to at least i think is probably the reason why it's such a a real broad diverse group of people who are involved so i know i kind of went in a completely different direction than where i started out with uh, and obviously i'm kidding about this stuff with bill um you know we kind of kid each other all the time about the different gear that we use we'll be shooting something right next to each other and i'll look at him and go, why are you using that and, oh, then he comes away with amazing images and i'm like ah, maybe i should have used that lens uh and vice versa so uh, we always have a fun time with it but uh, i just thought it was interesting to, to kind of respond to that because i'm down the other end of the spectrum from bill as far as the 50 millimeter focal length goes but to everybody out there whatever it is that you love shooting with keep shooting with it um definitely expand your horizons in different directions but you know whatever it is that you love whatever makes you tick whatever makes you you know get out there and be more creative stick with it keep going i'm going to link a couple of videos at the end here to uh i guess talking about 50 millimeters in a little bit more detail why i use that focal length so much so you can check those out uh but just wanted to have a little bit of fun with that uh so thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time